Greetings. Welcome, my dear friends. To Frostpunk 2. I like the idea of a utopia builder, but we're not doing that. We're just going straight into the story. I've been waiting too long. Not 30 years, but long enough. Welcome to Frostpunk 2. It is a challenging game in which planning ahead is crucial and failure is a natural part of the experience. If you're a veteran of the original Frostpunk or enjoy a challenge, you may try your luck with the officer or higher difficulty level. Otherwise, we suggest you start at Citizen and take it one step at a time. Remember, it's not about how many times we fall, it's about how many times we get up. Alright, Alfred. They came upon the old machines as they always do. When the white hat hits, they must survive. Okay. Let's get into this. We'll start at Citizen. Survivor mode is tempting, honestly, but no. Okay, prologue. The Wanderers. In 1887, the world froze to death. Civilization crumbled. The failing British Empire built generators to support cities of evacuees. Cities that would become the last on Earth. Whether huddled by a generator or out in the open frostland, those that survived were shaped by the ordeal. Thirty years later, all became very different people. Well, those that were young were old, and those that are young now weren't born yet. I did love the first Frostpunk, though. Hopefully, this is just as. Good is not the right word. <laughs> Not that it's not a good game, I'm sure. Harrowing. Harrowing, I believe, is the word I'm looking for. <coughs> Hear us, Stuart.
We've been roaming the frozen desert for years, and many of us do not remember a world before the Great Frost. Now another whiteout is coming, and again we've reached the old machine. Again we will rely on its furnace to provide heat through the storm. In the past, we always made sure there were enough supplies for the next whiteout. But our numbers have grown through the years. Providing for everyone is getting harder and harder. We must survive. <coughs> Will we? Well, it's, it's on the easiest difficulty mode, so probably. look very nice though. Fight the cold. The old dreadnought remains in pieces under layers of snow, but the scattered wagons still have resources inside. First, we must break ice to reach one of the oil wagons and construct an extraction district to use it. Then we can turn on the Dreadnought's furnace to heat it. So we will start the furnace. Okay, um... First break to an oil wagon and construct an extraction district and turn on the furnace and the Dreadnought wreck to provide heat. Okay. Um... Trees have a fixed number of tiles needed to begin construction. Fair enough. Okay. I'll wing it. Oh, frost break. Extraction district. Okay. I think we need to frost break first. Scraps. What's that all about? Stockpile global resource that can be spent on frost breaking funding construction using specific actions. Okay. Scraps are collected weekly. Really not understanding much of this at the moment, but what the hell, we'll get there. something happen? Maybe? I don't know. I really don't know what the hell I'm doing at the moment. Food stockpile hub? Probably not a terrible idea. Ah, I haven't... I think I might have been an idiot about things. Frost breaking requires that multiple tiles be selected. Of course, cold is cold. I think we understand what that is. It's not good. But I'm liking the little frost breaking machine things. They're cool. can 
construct the extraction district closer to the uh, oil itself. Cold, notable, and growing. Okay. Minus 20. That's pretty cold. district being built. Okay, people are hungry. Hunger rises when there's not enough food to satisfy demand. Cold is making people sick. Absence of squalor, we like that. Perhaps a housing district, though, is uh, not a terrible idea. some more frost breaking done. Nine weeks till the whiteout. Eight weeks. Man, time passes quickly in this frozen wasteland. Food district. frost and uh, get some food happening. Because my people are not happy. Dreadnought's Furnace. It serves as a heat generator. Need to have fuel, of course. Oil is the only source available. Okay. As the thick black liquid oozes through the pipes, our people rejoice. The carcass of this old machine is a testament to the hardships that made us. But more importantly, it's our haven in storm. It has allowed us to weather many whiteouts, and it will do so again. We have oil. We can turn on the furnace. Okay. Dreadnought wreck. Um, soil coming in. furnace is on. We have enough oil to cover current needs, but the cold will still affect our people until they have proper shelter. Housing will best protect us from the cold if built in close proximity to other housing, or the furnace itself. However, we'll need prefabricated parts for construction. We brought some with us. The rest we need to extract from the wagon wreckages. Prefabs... 
Okay. Another housing district. Righty. Great, due to cult, some of our people have frozen to death. That's wonderful. 30 of them. Well, that, that kind of sucks. Okay. We had 3,000. We can afford 30. terrible way of looking at things, but I have to be practical in this game. Gain access to food. We have established some heat and shelter for our people. We must now turn our attention to the incoming whiteout. First, we must frost break to the small patches of fertile soil suitable for growing food. Then we must store it in easily accessible depots. We must move quickly, so no one starves. Build a food district on fertile soil. Food... Food district, hello? Ah, there's the fertile soil. It's rather awkwardly located. We're going to need to um, break a lot more frost to get there, I think. for heat. That is excellent. Okay, time for a food district.
have no more resources for housing or food. That's alright though. That's fine. Yeah, in 30 years our numbers have grown dramatically. It's I have to say. For the whiteout, we secured our immediate survival. Now we have to stockpile as much food as we can before the whiteout forces us to take shelter. To do that, we need to produce more food than our current demand. We must be ready. Okay. Stockpiling. Okay, fair enough. Okay. That says to me that, uh, need more just more Disease is absent, that's good. Minor squalor. Not enough materials. Okay. Well, we'll get there. be stockpiling food. And currently we are not. Finn and Kel, 42, gardener, pouring sand in his hands. We've been trying, we've been here so many times, the soil is depleting. A couple more and there will be no point erecting the hothouses. There will be nothing to grow food on. The yield is so low. Either we pull emergency shifts or tighten our belts. Otherwise, it might not be enough for everyone. Uh, tighten belts or instill emergency shifts. 
I don't want to do either of those things. Yeah, 380 weeks at current rate, we need them in 57. Things are about to get colder. Three hundred and ninety of forty thousand. I don't know. Uh, Ninety four weeks. Okay, it's now doable. anymore I don't think ah uh, but you know what bugger it I want to make absolutely certain we have enough food simple as that Also building another food district here. Oh, what's going on here? Into the black, burying the dead, we mourn those who have recently passed. As is our custom, we take them to the oil pits. We gently lower their bodies into the thick blackness. The fuel that keeps us warm in life, likewise, preserves us in death. But death also erodes trust in our leaders. Without trust, there is no future. Trust and relations fall every time people die. I see. And we're about out of prefabs. Okay. Okay, that's fine. They don't like me much. I don't really blame them. I am asking them to starve now so that in 50 weeks time they're not going to. Against the elements, squalor. Each day the wind grows fiercer. Relentlessly it beats against our buildings, weakening our structures gust by gust. Without raw materials to repair the damage, our districts will deteriorate. The more we build, the more materials we will need. This is the world we know. I will gather more materials. 
I promise. That's oil. That's getting some prefabs right there. That is. I really want to make sure I have enough food. Now, extraction on construction wagon. There we go. place is defunct. Let us demolish this district and all its buildings. So that it may be repurposed. Trea Clegon, 62 seamstress. So others may live. My knees ache, and my fingers are so stiff I can't hold the needle anymore. I've lived a full life. It warms me heart to see little Betty and Jacob play by the evening fire, but maybe this is it. I've talked with the other elders. If it comes to it, we will go. I won't let my grandchildren starve. Some people are ready to sacrifice themselves to lower the food required. Well, we can't allow that, can we? Betty and Jacob need their grandmother. So we have to make sure there's enough food. Lack of prefabs. Yep. Yeah, that's fine. I've attended to that. Ah. Heat demand is increased because of extra cold. A mysterious symbol. The captain's legacy. One of our frost-breaking crew uncovered the frozen remains of a man in tattered uniform. His shoulder patch reads New London Scouts, 3rd Platoon. And he bears an obscure signature, insignia. Signature? Some of our elders claim it belongs to a military organization, while others argue it has a religious significance. Maybe you have heard of this new London before, and can settle their debate. It symbolizes order. Oh, do we want New London to be to have embraced order or faith? Let's make them religious nut bars. Absolute lunatics of the religious variety. There we go. It's a symbol of faith. Shit, the temperature will drop by 60 degrees. That's a lot. It's very a lot. Okay. I think we need more oil as well now. Mm -hmm. 
Aidan Fincham, 47, Elder, shocked at the sight of seals. Seals! I can't believe my eyes. We haven't seen them since before the Great Frost. How did they survive? There's enough meat there to feed everybody. We're saved. But should we slay them if the Lord spared them from the end of the world, too? Extraction. Squalor is growing, that's not good. Force available. <clears throat> well, we've been at it for a year, fifty two weeks. We have thirty seven left. That's fine, we will survive. We will do well, in fact. Provided we can get people warm. And fed. I know I like to be warm and to eat things. Okay, okay. Okay, repair housing districts.
I'm going to rescind emergency shifts, so I'll be nice to pay for. Have some scraps. might find out what happens when one of these things has failed. Because people aren't going to be very impressed if that does happen. I made promises, damn it. But you never know, it might be fine. People in the camp are getting tense. Well, we don't have a food district on the seal colony, so we can't slaughter the seals. And we're not letting our elders go, because that would be horrible, so we're not going to resort to extremes. We will gather enough food in time. Because we will. We just will.
apparently time left four weeks for the stockpiling. That's um did it! We secured enough food to survive the incoming whiteout. Our workers will make some last minute preparations before the storm arrives. We should try and keep our people warm for this time. We will survive. Now we wait. Waller remains. We failed to generate enough materials in time. Our people are unhappy about working in districts prone to collapse. Trust falls. Let's focus on food. Because we've got enough of that. Let's focus on the thing I've done well, shall we? and we don't have to worry about harvesting seals either. That's useful.
Let's just speed things along. Bad, then repair the wear, please. Run out of food there in 19 weeks. There in 10. There in 19. Okay. But we get a whiteout in 2. Whiteout, ahoy! Minus 90 degrees Celsius. That's very fucking cold. Against all odds, the Wanderer's survival. When the Whiteout hit the camp, the Wanderers were ready. Everyone was thankful we acted fast and gathered enough food in time. The miracle of the seal colony strengthened our hope that our journey would lead to a promised land. Our elders have added this story to our great tales alongside warnings about a sinful city that still pumps smoke into the sky. We survived. We did survive. We survived the end of the world. Clearly. Now what? Dead New London is weak. His low overpopulation looms. Cold is running out. People yearn for a future worth dreaming of, but is it the same future for all? Keep this city together. Or hold its hand on its deathbed. Chapter 1. Scraping the Barrel. Coal is running out. The captain is dead. As he weakened, growing divisions brought city maintenance to a grinding halt. Now New London is left to suffer the consequences. As steward, it is your charge to lead, but you must Prove yourself. The overcrowded city is low on resources. Use this warmer year to build more shelter, secure coal, and power the generator back on. Let's get to work. Next time. For now, I hope you've enjoyed watching my people suffer through cold and hardship. I shall see you next time. Farewell for now.